So in this video, we're looking at rearranging algebraic equations. Now, we've done plenty of stuff before where you've been solving algebraic equations. You've been solving algebraic equations. Now, in all of those, you've had one unknown. You've had one variable, x usually, and you've solved for x. But in an algebraic equation, uh, let me give you an algebraic equation you're familiar with. Area equals length times width. In this algebraic equation, there are no numbers. There's just letters everywhere. But we can rearrange that. We can rearrange it to say that area uh, divided by length equals width. We could rearrange it to say that area divided by width equals length. So we can rearrange purely algebraic things. This is handy because now I don't just have a formula to find the area of a rectangle. I have a formula to find the width of a rectangle if I know the area and the length. And I have a formula to find the length of a rectangle if I know the area and the width. So now I have three formulas and I can all because I knew the first one. That's why we're rearranging algebraic equations. Let's take a look. It's the easiest way to learn. Now I may have misspoke a little bit. Uh, an algebraic equation can have numbers and letters. You can see numbers and letters here. Now, in this one, I'm going to rearrange 6x plus 8y minus 48 equals 0 to make y the subject. I'm, maybe I'll just write that. To make y the subject. Now, when I say to make y the subject, in these cases, a is the subject. W is the subject, and L is the subject. The subject is the letter that's all by itself on one side, and everything else is on the other side. So, we need to make Y the subject. So we need to move this negative 48 to the other side. We need to get rid of the 6X onto the other side, and we need to get rid of the 8. So those are the things that are stopping us from having Y by itself. Now, first of all, you need to move any terms that you can. So, 6x plus 8y minus 48 equals 0. This negative 48 and this positive 6x can both go to the other side. Now, what I'm really doing is adding 48 to both sides. We get positive 48 and subtracting 6x from both sides. So now I have 8y equals 48 minus 6x. Now the thing that's stopping me is this 8, and this is 8 times y. So that's y equals 48 minus 6x, and then divide by 8. What I really did was divide both sides by 8. It's just that when I divide by 8, the 8 cancels out on the left-hand side. All right, so y is the subject. That's the end of that question. Questions obviously are going to get more difficult. Now this question says, make u the subject. So if I look at this question, here's u. And we have s equals u times t plus one half a t squared. Okay. So here's a whole term that we can get rid of or move. So it's going to be s this is plus one half a t squared. So if I subtract one half a t squared, it'll be gone from this side, and we can subtract it from this side. So that's s minus one half a t squared equals u t. From there, that's u times t. So I can divide by t. One half a t squared divided by t. u is the subject, and all of this is here. Now, it doesn't matter if I put u on the left, u on the right. As long as it's by itself, it's the subject. Finally, this one's really difficult. t equals 2 times pi times the square root of m over k. And we want to make k the subject. So, First it says t equals 2 pi times 
square root m on k. That square root's holding us back, so we need to get rid of everything else before we deal with the square root. So let's get rid of the 2 pi. That's 2 pi times square root m times k. That's going to be 2 divided by 2 pi square root m divided by k. Okay, now I need to do the opposite of a square root, which is squared. So t over 2 pi squared equals m over k. And now this is where things get a little bit complicated because k is on the bottom. So if I multiply both sides by k, k will come to the top. Because when we make k the subject, k needs to be on the top of the fraction. It can't be on the bottom of the fraction. All right, so that'll be k t 2 pi squared equals m. So that's k bracket t on 2 pi squared. Now that looks like we've made a backward step, but now k is on this side with all of this stuff. k times all of this. So I can get rid of that by dividing by all of that. Uh, bracket t over 2 pi squared. Okay, uh, there are some other things we can do to sort of neaten this up, because it's a fraction on a fraction and it's a bit ugly, but K is the subject, I'm going to leave it there. If you want to talk to me further about how to neaten that up, or if you want to try neatening it up yourself, hint, maybe try expanding this first, and then moving from there, getting rid of this squared sign by squaring t and squaring 2 pi. You can move from there. All right, rearranging algebraic equations. The key, the key to solving these, practice. You've just got to practice these over and over and over and over again. You've got to look for as many different types of these questions as you can and just try them and try them and try them. All right, good luck.